video I'm going to show you how I make slab plates. I'm going to show you three different techniques. Firstly I'll go over how I make these really simple slab plates. I call them freestyle slab plates because all you need is a rolling pin. Then I'll look at how I make these plates. These are made with a hump mould and they have a foot ring on them. And then lastly I'll look at this plate which I made with a press mould. So here's the first method that I use. It's really the simplest of the three. When I'm making a slab of clay, what I do is I start off by shaping the clay roughly into the shape that I want it to be. So for example, I want this to be a, a circular slab, so I just shape it into a rough circle and then I flatten it out with the heel of my hand. Flattening it out just makes it easier to start rolling. If you start trying to roll a really big chunk of clay, it's really difficult to do. So flatten it out with the heel of my hand first, and then using a rolling pin, I start rolling it out. And at the moment I'm not using the roller guides yet, I'm just flattening the clay out a little bit, and picking it up, lifting it up and turning it now and again, and then continuing to roll. When you're making a slab, it's a good idea to turn the clay regularly, turn it over so that it doesn't stick to the surface that you're rolling on, but also so that you're stretching it in a different direction, you're not just stretching it in one direction all the time, because if you do that, it can weaken the clay. By turning it over and turning the direction or the orientation of the clay slab, you're stretching it in different directions and um, putting it under less stress. And then once the slab is of a certain size, I'll transfer it over onto a movable sheet. That's a cotton back to final tablecloth that I like to roll on. And then carry on rolling it using the roller guides now. And then to turn it, I put another sheet of the tablecloth over the top, slip my hand underneath and then flip it over. And turning it that way just stops it from stretching out stretching the slab. And then once it's rolled to the right thickness, I just compress it down with a rubber rib. Just this smooths, this smooths it out, but it also helps to align the clay particles and just give the slab just a little bit of extra strength. I compress it on both sides, so I turn it over and compress it on both sides. And then this is actually a cake board um, that I found. I was, I do have a, um, a template for making slab plates that's made out of foam craft, but actually this cake board is exactly the same size. So I've started using this one recently because, because the cake board is firm. When you are cutting out, it doesn't, um, it's just easier to cut around the, the cake board because it's, it's rigid. Um, so anything that you can find that's the right size, um, it will work as a template when you're making slab, slab pottery. You can just be inventive. So cut around the, the template, peel away the excess clay, and then lift away the template. And then again, just smoothing out any texture that the cake board has left. I then leave the clay slab to firm up for a while so that at the moment it's very soft and pliable um, so I leave it for a little while um, it depends on what the temperature and the humidity is like where you're working but I would leave it until it is soft leather hard once it's soft leather hard you can start to fold up the edges of the plate like you can see I'm doing at the moment just gently folding them up with your fingers and your thumbs um, cur curving it up just to make a rim for the plate. But like I say, the clay has to be um, a little bit firmer than absolutely fresh. If it's absolutely fresh, if you start trying to curve it up, it'll just flop down immediately. Um, but if it's a little bit firmer, it'll stay, um, stay in the position that you curve it into.
Once you have curved up the rim of your plate, you can put something underneath them to support the rim whilst it's becoming leather hard. You can use various things to do this. One of the best things that I've found, um, which is just a little hack that I've picked up, it's not something that is necessarily recommended by anyone, <laughs> any sort of pottery, any other potters that I've come across, but is using these foam hair rollers. Um, they're just designed, they're actually pieces of foam that have got wire in them that you can use to um, curl hair. Uh, but the good thing about them is that they are foam, so they're soft, um, they're not absorbent, so they're not going to dry the clay out really quickly. And they have a piece of wire in them as well, so they stay in the position that you curl them into. So they're, they're good for supporting clay. Um, so I put those around the, the rim just whilst it's drying out, whilst it's sort of firming up and becoming leather hard. Also, whilst the clay is becoming leather hard, I use a bag of rice and position it on top of the slab just to stop the slab from warping or bending as it dries, which they're apt to do. Then once the plate's leather hard, I tidy up the edges using a shredder or a shore form. The shredder, the, the red tool there is a shredder by Mud Tools. And the blue one that I'm using is just, uh, it's called a shore form and I bought it from a local hardware store. Um, you just, it, when you drag it over the surface of the clay, it just, as you can see, it's just shredding off the lumps and bumps and rough edges of the clay. So I just take it around the rim and tidy up the rim of the plate taking off any excess clay and removing any um, any uneven areas. And then this little tool is called a notched rib. It's a little rubber rib with a little notch in it which you can use to smooth out the, the rim of your pottery. As you can see you just pop it onto the, the rim of the plate and then draw it over the surface and it takes away the rough um, the rough surface that's been left by the shredder. These are quite easy to make. You can just get an old um, an old bank card or an old travel card and cut out a little um, notch from an old an old bank card and use that as well. And this is a small piece of chamois leather which is slightly slightly wet. Um, chamois leather is great for just tidying up the details on pottery because um, it holds a bit of water but it doesn't get absolutely sopping wet and the finish is very smooth. Um, you can use it to just tidy up little details. So I just run the chamois leather around the rim of the plate just to give it a nice smooth finish. I dried the plate slowly on a metal grid like this just to allow airflow to go around the whole thing and to prevent it from warping, warping or curving as it dries. And here's the finished plate. It's been decorated with some blue underglaze and then um, a clear glaze applied on top. And this plate was made using the same technique. It was just decorated with underglaze transfers and then covered with a clear glaze. And this is the way I make slab plates using a hump mould. It's the same process when making the slab, the clay slab. Just roll it out and then compress it down with a rubber rib. And then I use the same sized template to cut out a circle of clay. The difference with this one is I'm not going to just recycle the scraps there. I'm going to put them to one side because I'm going to make the foot ring out of those scraps of clay. And then once I've taken off the excess clay, I cover the um, cover the clay slab up with a bit of plastic just to stop it from drying out too much. To make the foot ring, I use this narrow trimming tool. You can use a foot maker like this, but for this particular plate, I want the foot ring to be quite narrow. So instead, I am going to use this one. So I just hold the slab of clay quite firmly at one end and then using the trimming tool I just drag the trimming tool through this clay slab and it cuts out a nice square long strip of, of clay that's nice and evenly shaped.
And then once I've cut them out, what I do is I wrap them in a bit of plastic just to make sure that they don't dry out because they do dry really quickly. Those strips will dry out and become leather hard really quickly and I need them to be quite soft and pliable. So then just removing the plastic from the slab and compressing it again just to get rid of any wrinkles on the surface that have been created by the plastic. And I'm just finding the, the, the center of the slab there using a ruler because I'm going to put a, I'm going to use a template with some texture on it to create a design on the plate and I just want to know exactly where the center is so that I can position the template properly. And that's me just positioning the template right in the center of the slab. What I'm using there is actually a silicon texture mat, mat that I made myself. And if you want to know about how I, how I make the texture mats, I'll put a link in this video to another video that I made on exactly that. So just position the mat right in the center and then using a pony roller, just compressing the mat down onto the clay slab just to make sure that it makes a nice impression in the clay of the design that's on the underside of the texture mat. And then just peeling it away. And then because the clay was quite still quite fresh and sticky, I'm just using a rubber rib to get rid of any marks around the around the textured design um, that were left by the by the edge of the texture mat. And this is a, a hump mold which I'm just lowering right into the centre of the slab, just eyeballing it to make sure it goes onto the centre of the slab. And if you just check out the little cutie in the corner there watching what I'm doing, I think he's looking for some snacks. So once it's in the right position, I flip the whole thing over so that the mould is underneath and the clay slab is on top. I'm just balancing the whole thing there on a, on a wide glaze pot just so that the, the clay slab can hang down over the edge of the, the mould quite easily without um, touching the surface of the table. And then once it's in position, I just gently use my hands to curve the clay slab around the mould. I do it quite gently and slowly because if you do it too quickly, if you bend the clay too quickly, it can crack a bit around the, the base, around the edge. So, but if you do it really s slowly and carefully, um, it should be fine. And then I'm just using a rubber rib to go over it just to compress it and make sure it's, uh, the shape is nice and even and it's curving evenly around the mould. This is a second mould. Um, it's one size smaller than the mould that I used to shape the plate and that is the, the mould that's currently supporting the plate is just a little bit bigger than this one. So I'm just positioning it on top there and I'm drawing around it with a needle tool and I'm going to use that circle that's um, scored in by the needle tool as a guide for positioning the, the foot ring. And these are the strips of clay that I cut out earlier on with the trimming tool. I actually forgot to film myself cutting them to length. So what I decided to do is just to position them back on the base of the plate so you can see how they fit together. And when you're cutting the strips to the right length, it's a good idea to cut each one to with a bit of a beveled edge um, so that you're joining them on a bevel and this creates, um, uh, means that they fit together well and they join, they bond together more strongly, it creates a stronger bond. Once I've cut the pieces to length I just use a serrated rib tool just to score into the ends of each strip of clay. Um, I'm scoring into the ends just to make sure that when you join them together it creates a, a nice firm bond. Um, by scoring in, it means that the pieces of clay will key in to each other well. Um, you can put a bit of slip on the scored ends, but because this clay is really still quite soft, um, it's not always necessary to use slip when you're blending it together. As long as it's sort of scored um, and the there's enough moisture in the clay, you can join it without actually adding adding additional slip, particularly because it's such a thin piece of clay. If you add slip, it can get a bit kind of mushy and a bit 
a bit gloopy. So I'm just joining the whole, all of them together into a ring to make a nice ring shape. And then I'm scoring on the underside of the of the ring of clay because this is what's going to join onto the base of the plate. I just move it out of the way carefully so I don't stretch it. And then what I'm doing there is I'm just scoring into the underside of the plate as well. That's where the that's where the foot ring is going to go. And with this actually I did when I was at when I was at it before I added the foot ring, I did actually put a bit of slip on the base of the plate as well because that by this point the, the plate had become a little bit drier and I just wanted to make sure that it was going to attach securely to the base of the plate and not come off whilst it was drying. Once the slip's been applied I just drape the clay foot ring over the base of the plate and position it in a circle. And then I'm moving the whole thing onto a banding wheel so I can turn it around easily. That's my sign signature stamp, which I'm adding before I take away the mould from the inside. Um, and then I'm just using a small wooden tool just to blend the, the foot ring onto the base of the plate. Blend it in on the outside edge and also on the inside edge. And then again, I'm just using that small piece of chamois le damp chamois leather just to smooth away the marks that have been made by the, the modelling tool. And now what I'm doing is I'm turning the banding wheel and I'm trying to find the point on the plate where the, which looks like the narrowest part of the, the rim of the plate. So I've, I've just eyeballed it, I've found what looks like the narrowest part, I've made a small mark and using my compass, my draftsman's compass, what I'm doing is I'm going around I'm just making a mark, if you can see there where I circled, I'm making a tiny mark on the plate so that um, I'm marking all the way around so that I've got an equal um, measurement all the way around the plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then use the shredder to shred away any excess clay so that the, the rim of the plate is the same size all the way around. If you can see there, I'm just shredding the clay away up to the little mark that I made with the uh, compass. And then once I've leveled out the, the rim of the plate, I then take the shredder and just run it over the base of the foot ring as well. I'm not going to tidy up the foot ring particularly at the moment, I'm just trying to level it out so that I can turn the plate the right way up and then remove the mould. And then again I use the shredder just to go over the very top rim of the plate, which I didn't do before when the plate was upside down, just rounding off the rim of the plate with a shredder and then again using that notched rib just to take away the texture that's been left behind by the shredded shredding tool. And then I'm just using a soft mop brush there to dust away any little bits that have been left on the plate from the shredder. And again, just using the chamois leather just to finish off the, the rim of the plate. And I'm just putting a bit of plastic on the, on the plate there. I'm going to put the mould back in position and I put the plastic on there just because I don't really want the plate to dry out quickly at this point. Um, and the mould, because the mould is made of wood, it draws moisture out of the clay quite quickly so the plastic just prevents the mould from absorbing too much water from the clay too quickly. 
with plates I find it's best to let them dry out um, as slowly as possible really because they're large flat pieces of clay um, they, the rims can dry out much quicker um, so what I'm doing there is I'm just using the chamois leather just to tidy up the, the foot ring of the of the plate get rid of, a, of the marks made by the shredder and there's the finished plate before it's been fired and to let it dry out completely to bisque fire it um, like I say I put a piece of plastic in there put the mold back in place and then I turn it upside down again and then I'll put the bag, the rice bag, which is basically just a piece of um, material, any old piece of fabric will do, with some rice tied up with an elastic band around it and just put that in position to stop it from um, warping when it, when it dries. And here's the glazed plate. It's glazed with a celadon glaze just to highlight the texture. And this plate was made using the same technique, it was just decorated in a different way um, using underglaze and a clear glaze. And this is how I make plates using a press mould. I cut the slab to shape and then smooth one side with a rubber rib. And then turn the slab over. smooth the other side down and then what I'm doing now is just I'm finding the central point of the slab because I'm going to add some texture to this slab before I use the press mold. You don't have to add texture to your slab you can just use a smooth slab but if you do want to add some texture the mats that I'm using here are Mako texture mats. So just put them in place and then press them down with my thumb and use a pony roller too just to make sure that it leaves a nice impression. And I'm just lifting it off there um, carefully first with a needle tool and then just peeling it away. And um, I'm just going to repeat that pattern a few times over the centre of the plate. After I've added the texture to the plate I just leave it to firm up for a little while before I use the press mould. I want it to be not leather hard but I want it to be a little bit firmer, not really soft and fresh. To use a press mould you'll need a large block of foam and you can get a piece of foam from an old piece of upholstery or you can buy a block of foam online and cut to size. So what I'm doing there is I'm just transferring the slab of clay carefully to the block of foam and then positioning it right in the centre and then um, this is the press mould, it's actually the same mould that I used as a hump mould before but I'm just using it in a different way so I'm positioning it right in the centre of the slab just eyeballing it to make sure it's right in the centre and then I'm just getting on a stool there just to give myself a little bit of height and a bit of leverage um, because the foam's quite firm I'm just pressing down into the foam as firmly as I can, making sure that I apply an even pressure to each area of the plate. And then once you've used the press mould you can lift the clay slab and the mould off the foam block. Because the, cl the clay is relatively firm, once you remove the block the sides of the plate should stay up in position and you can just straighten them out because they will have become a little bit fluted in places. So you can just even them out and then although the sides of the plate are likely to stay up in, in position you can support them using those foam rollers that I showed you before they just make sure that that'll just make sure that the, the sides don't slump down at all whilst the clay is drying becoming leather hard and then again to prevent the plate from bowing up I put the rice bag on it whilst it's drying out and becoming leather hard. Once it is hard, once the clay is hard enough to um, to shred then I remove the foam rollers, put it on a banding wheel and then use the shredder again just to tidy up the, the rim of the plate.
And then once you've tidied up the edges, you can use the chamois leather just to remove the texture from the shredder, shredder on the edge. And that's the finished plate before it's been fired. And here is the final glazed piece. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.